There is nothing more tantalising than a thing like this, which lingers just outside the borders of one's memory. He hated to give up. Now wait a minute, he said. Wait just a minute. Mulholland. Christopher Mulholland. Wasn't that the name of the Eton school boy who was on a walking tour through the West Country and then all of a sudden, milk, she said, and sugar. Yes, please. And then all of a sudden, Eton school boy, she said. Oh no, my dear, that can't possibly be right because my Mr Mulholland was certainly not an Eton school boy. When he came to me, he was a Cambridge undergraduate. Come over here now and sit down next to me and warm yourself in front of this lovely fire. Come on, your tea's all ready for you. She patted the empty place beside her on the sofa and she sat there smiling at Billy and waiting for him to come over. He crossed the room slowly and sat down on the edge of the sofa. She placed his teacup on the table in front of him. There we are, she said. How nice and cosy this is, isn't it? Billy started sipping his tea. She did the same for half a minute or so. Neither of them spoke, but Billy knew that she was looking at him. Her body was half turned towards him and he could feel her eyes resting on his face, watching him over the rim of her teacup. Now and again, he caught a whiff of a peculiar smell that seemed to emanate directly from her person. It was not the least unpleasant and it reminded him, well, he wasn't quite sure what it reminded him of. Pickled walnuts? New leather? Or was it the corridors of a hospital? Mr Mulholland was a great one for his tea. She said at length, never in my life have I ever seen anyone drink as much tea as dear sweet Mr Mulholland. I suppose he left fairly recently, Billy said. He was still puzzling his head about the two names. He was positive now that he had seen them in the newspapers, in the headlines. Left, she said, arching her eyebrows. But my dear boy, he never left. He's still here. Mr Temple is also here. They're on the third floor, both of them together. Billy set down his cup slowly on the table and stared at his landlady. She smiled back at him and then she put one of her white hands and patted him comfortably on the knee. How old are you, my dear? She asked. Seventeen. Seventeen, she cried. Oh, it's the perfect age. Mr Mulholland was also seventeen, but I think he was a little, a trifle lit shorter than you are. In fact, I'm sure he was, and his teeth weren't quite so white. You have the most beautiful teeth, Mr Weaver. Did you know that? They're not as good as they look, Billy said. They've got simple masses of fillings in them in the back. Mr Temple, of course, was a little older, she said, ignoring his remark. He was actually 28, and yet I never would have guessed it if he hadn't told me. Never in my whole life there wasn't a blemish on his body. A what? Billy said. His skin was just like a baby's. There was a pause. Billy picked up his teacup and took another sip. Then he sat down again and gently in his saucer he waited for her to say something. But she didn't seem to and there was just another lapse of silence. He sat there staring ahead of him into the far corner of the room, biting his lower lip. That parrot, he said at last. You know something? It had me completely fooled when I first saw it through the window from the street. I could have sworn it was alive. I last no longer. It's most terribly clever the way it's been done. It doesn't look at least a bit dead. Who did it? I did. You did? Of course, she said. And have you met my little Basil as well? She nodded towards the dash hound, curled up all comfortably in front of the fire. Billy looked at it and suddenly he realised that this animal had all the time been as still and silent and motionless as the parrot. 
He put out a hand and touched it gently on the top of its back. The back was hard and cold, and when he pushed the hair to one side, with his fingers, he could see the skin underneath, greyish black and dry and perfectly preserved. Goodness gracious me, he said. How absolutely fascinating. He turned away from the dog and stared with deep admiration at the little woman beside him on the sofa. It must be the most awfully difficult thing to do like that. Not in the least, she said. I stuff all my little pets myself when they pass away. Will you have another cup of tea? No, thank you, Billy said. The tea tasted faintly of bitter almonds and he didn't much care for it. You did sign the book, didn't you? Oh yes, that's good. Because later on, if I happen to forget what you were called, then I can always come down here and look it up. I still do that almost every day with Mr Mulholland and Mr... Mr... Temple, Billy said. Gregory Temple. Excuse my asking, but haven't there been any other guests here in the last two or three years except me? Holding her teacup high and in one hand inclining her head slightly to the left, she looked up at him out of the corners of her eyes and she gave him a gentle smile. No, my dear, she said. Only you.